Hi, I'm Jeff Rich and welcome to the Burning Archive podcast. This is a podcast about all things history and culture and where we try to show that the past isn't dead, the past is not even past, as William Faulkner said, and also where we talk about the past in order to try to live better with the times that we are living in right now. Okay, this is episode one, and today we're going to talk about the tragic sense of history. Wow, aren't we living in interesting times? We sure seem to be uh, living through some historic events. Whether they're unprecedented events, I'm not so sure. But let's look just over the last week or two, we've had uh, the foreign ministers of China and Russia speaking about a new world order to supplant the uh, American-run liberal uh, rules-based order. We've had the 2020 pandemic and all the backwash of it and the investigation of it. We've seen calls for great resets. We've seen statues toppled, sometimes insanely. We've seen all sorts of great figures from history, culture and literature cancelled. Even poor old Homer, even though Homer was a collective of uh, oral poets and bards from the, uh, you know, uh, pre-BC Balkans. We've seen a cultural revolution on the march, like China in the 60s, where the four olds are denounced. And all of this makes me want to make a podcast about the tragic sense of history, and one where we take the philosophy, as William Faulkner said, that the past isn't dead, the past isn't even past, and certainly the past can't be purged like a bad political enemy. So what's this uh, podcast about? Uh, it's about making sense of our lives with history. This storm of events that we have been going through can be frightening, paralyzing, isolating. When we look to the map of history, we're often given a fake map, an inane, silly map like, say, the 1619 Project. But I think we are at least able to approach the past with a spirit of curiosity. That's what I would recommend. To make sense of what is happening in the world. Not to condemn the past, but to be curious about it and how it is continuing to live within us today. The tragic sense of history also means that we approach the past with a sense of humility aware that our culture is a gift from an infinitely complex past of people rather like us in most respects, even if they seem strange and different, and that we should at least hear out before we tear it down. A sense of humble gratitude. But also humility before the power of the past and of the march of historical events, the firestorms of history, which will ultimately tear us all down into oblivion, overwhelm us all, even the most zealous progressives who will fall like Ozymandias statue in the desert. This makes history tragic. And before tragedy, we experience catharsis and a sense of the humility we need when looking upon the tragic face of history. Aware that in the passage of time, we lose our inheritance and lose control of our inheritance. Aware that however much we take a stand against events, history will defeat us all. So we get to the tragic sense of history. Making sense of what is happening in the world around us, asking, and these are the questions I guess that I'm, I'm trying to 
explore in this podcast, which is a bit of a new adventure for me. And I'll say more about myself in a minute. But the the questions that this podcast is sort of wrestling with are how can we make sense of what is happening in the world around us? What significance does it have in history? Are these indeed unprecedented events? Is this a fourth turning? Is this a cataclysm? Is this a whole new age? Is this just the same old, same old again? Is it the collapse of an order, a great reset? What can history show us to understand these events and their meaning for our lives more clearly and more deeply? We want to do this not from the perspective of an academic historian, which I am not, although perhaps I once aspired to be, not from the perspective of a grand master of world events, some Henry Kissinger discerning in history the true meaning of his political schemes. After all, we will probably get it wrong, get our interpretation of matters wrong. And yet we do have a moral responsibility to pursue our curiosity and to try to render the world that we find as truly as possible. So about me and why I am podcasting. So again, my name is Jeff Rich. Uh, I'm a new podcaster. Uh, This is my first ever podcast. Um, I because I am writing, uh, I'm talking here about history and I guess writing the scripts of these podcasts as well. Um, I used to be a history student, I guess a historian. I completed a PhD in history back in the early 1990s before entering the bureaucracy in one of the governments in Australia. And for the last I guess 30 odd years, I've pursued a career as a government official. Perhaps something like uh, the Byzantine historian and government official Procopius. And I have also been a writer of poetry, essays, I guess history too, uh, some fiction. And I have grown increasingly frustrated with the idiocy of so much in the contemporary scene of media and commentary about politics and world events. Not all of it, obviously, but there is so much ignorance, I guess, that's out there. And I felt I wanted to share my perspective, my knowledge with a wider audience. Now, I should say that I am the author of a blog. It's called The Burning Archive www.theburningarchive, or one word, dot com. Uh, it's a WordPress blog. And there I've written since 2015, I think. So, gee, that's, that's probably about six years now. And prior to that, I also kept another blog called the Happy Pessimist blog, which uh, is no longer available on the internet, so unless you can somehow get it off Uh, that that sort of time machine website thing and I've shared lots of my thoughts on history there and culture and I sort of wanted to do this blog to bring my writings to a broader audience and try out this new new theme a new new mode I guess of podcasting hardly new I guess but new for me and I guess another way of writing in dialogue with others. So I really welcome anyone reaching out um, who does listen to this podcast and uh, speaking to me. And you can also go and check out more of my writings and comment there on theburningarchive.com. And the other thing I'd say about all that is I've, the Happy Pessimist blog was for a long time um, done through a pseudonym. I adopted a pseudonym of a Jesuit priest from the 16th and 17th centuries, Antonio Possevino, who himself wrote in pseudonyms. And the reason I did that was because there are, I guess, real restrictions on the free speech of uh, people like me who are government officials and public servants. 
and who have a number of people have suffered you know actions uh, to protect the reputations of government or government institutions so at one level there is that and at another level i have a deep moral commitment i guess to living in truth to use the phrase that Buckler Havel uh, used um, in developing his his i guess political philosophy through the end of the communist era in eastern europe and i do feel this obligation to tell the truth about the world as i see it even if few people might share my ideas i don't really know but as i witness this collapse in confidence in broadcast elite culture to me there is this need for for those of us who can see a more authentic parallel culture a second culture or a parallel polis is another czech dissident who was a colleague of baklav avo in writing charter 77 said I feel an obligation to contribute to the construction of that parallel polis and hope that maybe a deeper richer culture can emerge that we can all participate in when the giants of big tech and big media and the decadent political elites who control our parties and governments so often collapse. So this podcast is a bit of an experiment and a elaboration maybe of some of my other writing uh at the burning archive and i think it's also probably a recovery of my voice as a historian you know i studied history back in the 80s and early 1990s and gave up uh, a career in the academy because in part to pursue a career in government in part because uh, i i really didn't know how to advance my career in, in the academy and yet i i think i've always wanted to be a kind of historian and so this podcast is a way of perhaps reclaiming that voice to write about the past how it how it or to speak about the past and how it relates to present day events and how we can see present day events differently with knowledge of the past comparison with the past not that everything you know is the same as it has always been not that it's all a tired tired cynical rerun of things that have happened before but but just the complicated drama of history unfolding before our eyes and 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 the tragedy of aspirations which can never be fulfilled of events overwhelming our you know fragile capacities and the constant struggle i guess we all experience of trying to live in our imagined worlds while also living in reality so there are some big themes for this podcast um and they i guess relate to how i see uh history or the the sort of moment in history that we are in at the moment four big trends or processes that seem to be un- underpinning so much of what is unfolding before us every day in the news and i think over time i'm going to sort of address these uh pot these big themes in little bite-sized chunks maybe as like series so to speak but uh since this is a new venture i don't want to sort of over commit to things but uh i certainly think i will uh begin at least by exploring each of these four themes in turn and then perhaps going back into them in in more depth and in a way i'm not entirely sure i've read these four themes correctly and the podcast in a way is a exploration a improvised dialogue with whoever it is that might be out there and encountering my words to make sense of events around us so what are these four big themes well first of all there is a 
theme of empires colliding and collapsing. And in particular there, I'm thinking of the great tragedy of the one empire that dare not say its name, i.e. America, the republic that cannot admit that it's an empire, that has given the world so much, you know, so much of our culture of freedom and independence and and um, innovation and and liberty and republican values and yet is now in at least in my view very very deep de decline decline after overreach and perhaps meeting its match in another rising power of china so that's one big theme empires colliding and collapsing and let's face it America today. Wow. Gee, what a mess. <laughs> Joe Biden is president. What can you say? And then the second big theme is cultural decay or fragmentation. And this has been a really deep, deep theme around my blog, The Burning Archive, which uh, I think I've subtitled at times essays, notes and poetry on against cultural decay but the the great traditions of our cultures do seem to be waning in their power and their cohesiveness and for some that's cause for celebration but for me with my tragic sense of history it is also very much a cause for grief and loss and I think also a cause of many deep, deep problems in our society and one that, that I will return to um, consistently over time. The third big theme, trend, is about political decay or disorder. Uh, and again, let's look at America. The Trump years in America were a kind of you know, civil war amongst the political elite and the oligarchs of America that ultimately seemed to end in a in a faux insurrection and a republic that can barely operate its own institutions anymore. And it's not really about the personality of Trump or the the personality or the cognitive capacity of someone like Joe Biden. It's it's the it's the absolute decay of that political system. And it's hardly only America that is suffering that problem. Uh, we see it around the world. Um, after all, in in many countries around the world there's there's shock amongst the public that the coronavirus has led to the denial of basic civil and political rights in so many countries, not just in relationship to lockdowns, but restrictions on freedom of speech, freedom of movement, and the sense that political elites are not really responding in an open, res open and constructive way with with their publics anymore. Are we in fact living in a post-democratic society? That's a question I will pose, but I'm also in a way building on the work of Francis Fukuyama in his extraordinary two volume history of political institutions and political uh, order called political Oh, what's it called? Political order and political decay, where he he traces how political institutions can form a bulwark against human tendencies of kinship affiliation and reciprocal altruism that that undermine stable orders of good government and that good government is a very difficult and precious thing to preserve. Then lastly, the final theme is about 
social fracture and conflict. Uh, clearly, we've lived through a year of riots on on race and uh, ideology and, I guess, growingly, increasingly debates about the right response to the pandemic. But there's also clearly enormous competition amongst the elites in our society for control of the great institutions and a growing sense of, of conflict. And in a way, I feel this big theme is perhaps the least well articulated at, at this point for me, but one which I will come back uh, to again, uh, including in relationship to a, a, a very fine French anthropologist slash historian who's written a book called, I think, Lineages of Modernity, uh, which, which which I think also illuminates some of the, these key trends. So there are the four big themes. Imperial rivalry and collapse, cultural decay and fragmentation, and I guess implicitly, what are the prospects of, of a, a renaissance of a second culture? political disorder and decay and what is the prospect of a rebuilding of good political institutions and finally social conflict and fragmentation what makes sense of the the social world that we're experiencing and and the way in which it seems to be falling apart is it really so are things actually getting better or are they getting better at the cost of some sort of sense of connection to to social life that that uh, perhaps was better known in past times but can't really be recovered in the world of social media and and lockdown and identity politics. So I'm going to begin the first few podcasts talking about the first of those themes, the one about empires, uh, and that will involve taking a look back at events of the last few weeks and of the last year or so, and including, I guess, China and Russia's challenge to US imperial hegemony and the shifting balance of geopolitics in the world and the 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 american emperor falling uh, on his red carpet stairs and i guess underline those questions which you know seem very grand but for me and i don't live in america i live far far away in the southeast corner of australia in melbourne australia Melbourne, Victoria, and but like many of you, I guess in the audience, although the emperor is far, far away, heaven is high and the emperor is far, far away, nonetheless, we need to wrestle with what does this mean for us that uh, one great empire appears to be collapsing and another one, or perhaps a multipolar world, emerging in its place. What does it mean for our, our daily life, how we make sense of events, which commentary on events we pay attention to? What are we losing? What are we gaining? This is not really an outcome anyone perhaps is really seeking and it's hardly a series of events anyone has the capacity to control or strategize about despite any grand delusions otherwise. So what are we, what, what's our obligation as citizens of the world um, as this, this great tragedy unfolds before us and the American Republic appears on the brink of some very difficult years. So to wrap up, that is the tragic sense of history, a bit about what I mean by that title, who I am, and 
what I mean to cover in my podcast. I hope you are curious about it and want to hear some more. I'm planning to do either a weekly or fortnightly schedule, depending on how I go with things. I can't promise more than sharing my perspective and views on the world. Uh, At some point, perhaps the podcast might evolve to have guests and interviews and all that sort of thing. But uh, for now, I'm beginning with just my, you know, monologues. I hope they're of interest to you and I hope they can help illuminate for you uh, something about the historical times that we're living in, the resources that we have in this extraordinary world of the internet, digital media to, and education to, to comprehend our place in the great flow of historical events. And indeed the importance of listening to history to make sense of today. I hope my disposition towards history is of interest to you. I'd like to emphasize, I guess, that the tragic sense of history is not a a rigid view. I think at times history is best rendered as a comedy, a satire, (laughs) uh, a farce even. But underlying it, there is this sense of deep, deep tragedy and perhaps the moving character of that is perhaps what draws us most to trying to understand the deeper events we're experiencing. And I hope I've given you a little bit of a sense, which I might return to more in in later podcasts about how I came to history and how I use it as a source of meditation and wisdom, if not mastery, definitely not mastery. And the meaning of this podcast for me Uh, as a way of giving voice to meaningful hope and to express the culture, the traditions that have formed me, the traditions that I hope to bequeath to some future time uh, amidst all the, all the, the flurry and the, the nonsense of the media and pass something on to to the infinite conversation. So you can read more uh, of my work at uh, theburningarchive.com. Uh, it's a WordPress blog. Uh, there I have poetry and essays and book reviews and I guess commentary on events, political, cultural, and social. I never step outside the bounds of the rules that guide me as a public servant in in re- remaining independent. I'm not really a big P political person, but I do feel I have a lifetime's reflection on history and and world events that might be of use to a broader audience and in a way, I'm also curious just to to think aloud in public like this and maybe come up to some sort of answer in response to any any commentary I get from you as an audience that would not be there if I just relied on my own reading and and thought. So let me sign off then on my final, oh my, not my final, my first episode of the burning archive podcast i hope you've enjoyed it um i'm looking to produce my second episode in about a week and uh, i can promise you i'll try to do better in terms of technical production i might even try to add a little bit of music at the start and the end generally improve the quality of the podcast. This is very much an introductory episode as much for me as it is for you. I hope it hasn't been a little bit too amateurish for you. Um, You can uh, read more of my uh, writings at the Burning Archive um, blog or 
website. So that is the burning archive all one word dot com um, on the web and also you can find uh, my podcast identity at uh, Twitter um, at the bur- at archive burning I think it is let me yeah well it's it's the burning archive at archive burning and uh, I hope maybe I might have some more social media channels before too long, but that's it for now. Uh, there's not a whole lot on my Twitter. I must say I don't really trust the uh, platform terribly much, and we might talk about that more in a, in a later episode. Um, however, if you do want to uh, leave a comment or a positive review of my uh, first venture into podcasting, that'd be awesome. I will talk more next week uh, about the theme of imperial decay and imperial rivalry and a little bit about um, uh, whether we have a empire in denial in uh, the modern world and um, just what that might all mean for us as we try to live well in the 21st century. Okay, I will check you out there uh, next week. Uh, And in the meantime, just remember that the past is not dead. The past is not even past. And see you next time. Bye.